Rest in peace, my cousin T-Roy. You heard, I can't even believe I'm saying this. You heard, gone way too soon, way too young. And that's a fact. And sometimes it's tragedies that snap you back into reality. And make you realize that life is short. And life is precious, baby. We ain't got no time to be consumed by negative energy. We ain't got no time to let negative energy throw us off our focus. It's only a few things important in this life. Real friends, family, love, your kids, and your health. I never thought that I would get jumped in Moss. He gave him the gun, he started shooting at me, I started shooting at him, and you know, it went left and it didn't supposed to go left. When Tilo went to HDM and all that happened with him, um, it, it was kind of bad for everybody, you know what I mean? Because that was the big, big home, you know what I mean? And um, see, the Tata, me and Tata used to still kick it and everything. Like I said, that's my bro, you know what I mean? And next thing you know, uh, some chick that was uh, smoking crack tells Tata that I was selling at his spot, which was wrong. But, you know, I didn't know until Tata seen my cousin riding down the street and he says yo when i see your cousin i'm gonna smack the shit out of him so i'm sitting in the back my cousin backs up roll down the window you talking to him he says yeah so i get out and you know like at this time like i said that's my bro and plus i seen tata with a lot of motherfuckers ass dude and i was like damn how the fuck i get into a conversation with this motherfucker but now what you I mean he was talking about a spot in the projects in the projects Right. It was a crack spot. You know what I mean? But like I said, I didn't I don't want to toot my home, but at that time, if I if I literally was selling in his spot, it only would have enhanced it because I had clientele. I didn't i you know, when they was coming around me, you got fifty cent here, yeah, take it, go, buy, don't crowd me. You get what I'm saying? Because it draws attention. But back to the um time time situation, I kiss out the car, I'm like, yo, what's the deal, man? You know what I mean? And he's like, yo. Told me you were selling in my spot. And I said, yo, dude, listen to a crackhead. Like, I wasn't selling in your spot. Fuck that. I'm going to take my baby in the house. I'm like, yo, man. So he goes in the middle circle. All of them were standing around. I'm, I'm a big box, a little box. Um, um, Tata team. Um, the whole, there was the whole crew just around there. And just me and my cousin. So I goes in a circle, we start fighting. It didn't go down the way that he wanted it to, you know what I mean? And next thing you know, I just stopped, you know what I mean? Because I'm still looking at him like, yo, this is my bro that got clientele out here with his hands. So I'm not gonna just fucking disintegrate that over some bullshit. So I stopped. Later on that day, they jumped me and shit. Shit just got crazy. Shushan, uh, Fuquan, all the little tribe that, you know, and I felt bad because at that time, I'm like, yo, I never thought that I would get jumped in Moss. I was going through Al Brooklyn. Me getting jumped in Brownsville, respectable. I'm not really from around there. I was just going through there. East New York, uh, Crown Heights, Flatbush. I, I never, I thought that those were the places that I will get jumped at because I come through, you know what I mean? But it wasn't my settled grounds. You get what I'm saying? But like Marcy and Coney Island, that was a no-no. And then when it happened, it just went haywire. Next thing you know, guns got involved and all this other stuff. And me and Tata never got to talk. I've been trying to get in contact with him, but you know, you still my bro. We was young. It was bullshit. I, you know, I told you before, we go through bullshit. Next thing you know, we back to normal. My man, let's just keep love, love. That, that's young shit. You know what I mean? It ain't it ain't really affect um, nobody in your family badly, and it ain't affect nobody in my family badly. We should all be good. You know what I mean? And 
proceed because the people that are affected badly is good with it now. I know because I spoke to them. I and spoke what, to what them. What you said happened though, like dudes started shooting at each other in the projects? Yeah. And what side yeah. you from? You from Flushing or I'm what? What's Flushing? I'm from Flushing, 552. Right in the same building as Tata. He lived on the first floor, I was on the second. So that's my bro. That I started going at me. Such and such gave him the gun. I seen the whole thing. I ain't giving out such and such name. I don't do that. But he gave him the gun. He started shooting at me. I started shooting at him. And you know, shit went left, and it didn't supposed to go left. But you know, that's the way we rocked. You know what I mean? But the next day, I came outside. It was outside, and you know, we, I mean, it was it was just bullshit that just kept escalating. You know what I mean? And then when they escalated to my cousin's situation, which my cousin wasn't playing the same game we was playing. You know what I mean? We fight the next day, we buddies. He fight the next day, we enemies. It, it, it was a two different scales. You get what I'm saying? And everybody is not on that scale. Like I said, I wasn't on that scale. I'm, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm far from a sucker. I don't do sucker shit. But in the same token, I wasn't out here wowing the fuck out for no fucking reason. You had people like that too. You know what I mean? I wasn't on their scale. Hey. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was just brought by the best not to be a sucker. And that's just it. And you said that was a straight lie that you never sold no drugs in spot? I never sold no drugs in Tata spot. In fact, I told him in his face that day where before we started fighting, I said, yo, dude, that was number one, your spot is in violation. It's right next door to my aunt house. You know what I mean? Because now I'm pissed. I was more pissed than... And just for the viewers' sake, you know, everybody in this story is grown men now. And this yeah. was what year? This was very, a very long time ago. 1989. 1989? Yes. All right. To be a... 1989. You know? And like I said, we, we all grown older. Uh, and, you know, that's the only person that I never got to talk to. Talk to. You know what I mean? I never, never violated his family in no form or fashion because even down to the little ones, they were looked at in my eyes as my bros, my sis, like his sisters. I not those was my sis because of their oldest brother. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Tilo schooled me on the side. I never hung with them, but he schooled me on the side. Let me know you're not gonna be that. You know what I'm saying? You're not getting chased home. You're not doing all that. You know what I mean? What and you mean? What you mean? What you mean? He told you how to, like, what? T-Lo told you how to stand up for yourself during school? Like, when you was exactly, in school? Exactly. Because when I was coming out of school, I, I had, a, I had a, 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 a slick mouth. I talk shit and everything. But I wasn't really ready to fight. You know what I mean? I was, I was talking shit. And I was getting chased home. And T-Lo caught me running. And he told me, yo, if I catch you running again, I'm going to make you fight all of them. Mm. And T-Lo shit. He caught me running home and made me fight them. So was it at one point where T-Lo kind of ran the whole Marcy? Or he was like that dude at Marcy at one point? Man, was he? Was he? And yo, the, the funny part about it, man, you look, you, I don't know if you've ever seen T-Lo. T-Lo was like 120 pounds. And he was probably about six, six foot, about 120 pounds, but a beast. Beast. You know what I mean? He did, yo, everybody regulated around his move. You do not move unless he tell you to. He was a beast. That was my bro. That was my that was my bro. I, I love my bro. I, I was I was hurt when that shit happened in HDM. Uh, you know what I mean? And it, it, I, he didn't go, he didn't go to jail. He didn't go he didn't go to jail on some shit that you know what we was out there doing and he was going to jail on. He was he wasn't going to jail on that. He went to jail on his family. You see what I'm saying? It was it was because of his sister. You know what I mean? Yo, they they viol the dude violated and did something to his sister and he wasn't hunting for him. You know what I mean? And that's respectable, man. 
after that, right. after y'all was shooting at each other and all of that, you said y'all was able to coexist in the projects? I mean, I was. I mean, I came back outside. They was all on the same bench that they always on. I come outside, and I just looked, and was like, and I said it. Hey, boys will be boys. You know what I mean? I went on the basketball court. But I, at this time, it was a different level of my mind now. Now I'm outside with the gun. Before, I was outside just free and like, shit, we gonna knuckle up. That's just it. What the fuck? They gonna whip my ass or I'm gonna whip their ass. And that's the case. But when I got jumped, it changes the whole ordeal of it because I was more hurt. I was in my feelings about the shit because... I'm looking at, this is my family. Like, I grew up around these motherfuckers. I'm not gonna get jumped, I'm gonna get my ass with one-on-one. When dudes jumped you, like, was it a bad jump or, you know, just dudes assisted? It, it's supposed to have been a bad jump, but it wasn't. I came out of there with a ripped Reebok shirt. <laughs> That's it, you know what I mean? But my, I, I, like I said, I stepped, I stepped forward too fast because my feelings was hurt. Because, like I said, those are like my peoples and I got jumped by them. And I'm not on, I, and I felt like I wasn't even on the scale that y'all was on. You get what I'm saying? Like, you got certain scales of uh, 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 tough motherfuckers, gangsters, and I wasn't on that scale. I was just on the scale of, I'm not going to be no soccer. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know, I wasn't, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, if I can resolve it to the fullest, I'd have did it. But if I couldn't, hey, we just knuckle up. I don't want to fight you, but shit. If you're forcing me to, then that's what I got to do. Jay and um, I never had no issues. They, you know, Jay come through. He was a smooth motherfucker. That's what I seen. And he lived right in the next building from me. You know, and Jay was a smooth motherfucker. Now, whatever they did when they went out of town, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I just know that when he came through 88, he came through with that motherfucking um, gray, that silver pins, and was like, yo, we going to um, um, London. <laughs> I was like, yeah. And then I was like, no, I couldn't, I just couldn't go. They was going to the real London? London. Yeah. 88. That's the, I think that's the time when they dropped. One and Sophie. And that's when he came through with the shiny motherfucking silver um. Was it the Benz or the BMW? It's one of them shits, damn it. I, I, I can't remember which one it was, but I know it was one of them. It was a silver joint, I remember that. And he was like, yo, we're going to London. I'm like, yes. Then I turned around the next week, I was all the way in Manhattan and shit, because I used to hang out in the east side of Manhattan too. I mean, like, I, I moved around the whole, whole NY was from my disposal man I, everywhere I can go I go I was in the Bronx I was in that's why when I went to um, Rockers Island I had beef with Brooklyn and Queens cause of some monster shit and then I had beef with Bronx and Manhattan cause I was from Brooklyn but a lot of people from Manhattan knew me from being out in Manhattan what you mean you had some beef on Rikers Island because of the problems you had in Marcy at that time yeah, because my cousin fucked around and shot one of them, and then he was on Rackers Island, and he sent in Queens and, and, and um, Brooklyn after me. I'm like, shit, what the fuck? And then um, Manhattan and Bronx was coming after me because I was from Brooklyn. It was chaotic. The, the person that my cousin shot, oh. sent, he was already on Rackers Island. He sent him motherfuckers after me. Sending them. And... I came off the visiting floor one time and I'm, I got my new gear shit. I go through the mess hall and they all stood up and I thought it was a, a celebrity thing. And next thing you know, I hit <laughs> motherfuckers are spitting on razors. I'm swinging, trying to get the fuck out of there. They caught me on the back of my neck with a little nick. <laughs> there ain't nothing major, but I was mad as a motherfucker. I'm like, yo, I, now I'm up in this Bronx house, but a couple of people from Manhattan knew me, I was like, yo, I got you. Other than that, I was like, I was sitting dead on Rackers Island, 1990, 91, I was sitting dead. And I was sitting dead because of the simple fact that I really ain't had nobody. I had a certain few from Manhattan, that was it. And I got lucky because even Chinese Shadow is my peoples in Manhattan. 
So he opened up the floodgate to let me live in the Manhattan Bronx house. And what year was this like? 1990, 91, 1991. Mm. Yep. And I was like, what the fuck, man? I got on there and I was like, I'm in trouble. But I tell you this, every time they were supposed to have been outside for me, I went outside. I'm, I'm, I'm not staying in the house. I can't do that. You know what I mean? I went outside and like I said, it was a select Manhattan people were like, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. You know what I mean? So they kind of, but I was from Brooklyn. But they knew me from hanging out in Manhattan too. And in the Bronx. So how long you had to lay up on the island and go through that shit? I laid up on the island for about eight months, and then I got a little bit older. They shipped me over to HDM, and then from HDM, I went upstate, did about 10 years. And the shit kind of followed me. Um, um, I got to, whoa, 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 let me give you this one. This it wasn't Franklin, it was uh, Cayuga. I was in Cayuga, and the same soldiers that was on Rack's Island came up there, and they plotted against me in the yard. And one of the guys, one of the guys, JV, 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 yes, JV. I love JV, but that I'll tell you, that dude scared the shit out of me on Rack's Island because every time I came out, he was with the person that put the hit out on me. So. <laughs> Every time I seen him, I'm saying to myself, damn, I gotta fight this old motherfucker, man. I was scared to death, right? We get upstate, and all the motherfuckers came out to the yard, talking about doing this and that to me. And who do I see? JV. I'm like, motherfucker. I'm like, this dude, what the fuck? I'm, I'm like, I can't dodge this motherfucker forever. He comes over there and he said, yo, what the fuck going on? What's going on? And they like, yo, you know, this motherfucker did this and that, that, and it was a hit on him. And he said, yo, we was on Rackers Island, right? And I stood there and watched the motherfucker that you talking about doing the soldier move for, ain't do shit to him. So which one of y'all want to go first? Because if you think you're going to jump him, it's going to be a problem. I was like, holy shit. I mean, like, luck was on my side forever and shit. You know what I mean? Because this old motherfucker I did not want to go up against. I'm telling you, dude, like, I'm telling you, I'm going to start it off from the beginning again. I was not one of them tough motherfuckers, but I just couldn't be a sucker. It, it just, it was embedded in me not to be bad. But he scared me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I knew I was like, I eventually I'm going to have to fight this motherfucker. And I was dealing with that now. I was like 17 and I was like four foot 11. <laughs> and he was big as hell I'm like god damn man but he, he set the record straight man and I, I definitely want to give out the shout out to JV he stood up and called it how he seen it man and you said and, since all of that y'all squat whatever that whatever took place with your cousin and all of that y'all squashed that and put that shit to rest yeah, I, well, I did. I went, I, because when I was in Comstock, dude came through that was putting all the hits out on me. I'll I name his name, you know, because I would like you to know that this ain't bullshit story. Shushan. I, I ran into, um, I ran into him, um, in Comstock. I, he didn't even see me. I seen Tim. Like I said, I didn't grow up to be no sucker. I seen Tim. I called the porter. Yo, my man down here with the dreads. I sent him a letter to let him know if you need anything, holler at me, but I need to talk to him outside. And you know, yo, you you, you read, you heard the stories of Shu. Shu don't fuck around, dude. He do not fuck around. So I knew once I go out to the yard, it was going to be problems. But I wanted him to keep the, the doges out of the whole equation because I know Shu. Shu ain't gonna tell on me. I've been going to and getting into trouble because of his soldiers. I'm, he's not gonna say shit. I'm not gonna say shit. We just proceed. You get what I'm saying? So we went to the yard. I said, yo, bro, do me a favor. Whatever we're gonna do, let's do it. But do not put them fucking people in this, man. You get what I'm saying? And I'm like, yo, I know Shu ain't gonna tell. 
We don't do that. So <laughs> that's why I, I let him, I call him to the yard, let him know. Look, let's do it. And like I said, she was a fucking beast, dude. He's a fucking beast. I know it. I just know that what I was up against. And he knew that I wasn't going to, I'm not going to, I'm not running. I'm still here in this fucking jail constant by myself, still. You got the whole tribe. You got everybody on lock. I'm cool with that. Just leave them out of it. And it's just me and you. And we do it from there. You know what I mean? And he spoke to me and he said, listen, that was a while ago, but your cousin shouldn't have did A, B, and C. And I said, I understand. So we kind of squashed it. But like I said, the only one I didn't get to talk to was my bro, Tata. Because like I said, his brother, look, I mean, because my cousins was always in jail. My cousin stayed in feds. And my, my other cousin, he's somewhere out in fucking L.A. hanging out with, um... Ice tea at the fucking players ball and shit. He ain't got time for me. You know what I'm saying? So Tilo stepped in. You know what I'm So yeah, that that family is always gonna be my bro, my sis. You know what I mean? And that's the only way it's gonna be with me. I don't know how he feel, but I would love to talk to him and, and see how he feel. I would like to just get that resolved and be like, yo, boom, y'all niggas is grown ass men now. That shit was 1989. You know he not stressing that shit no more. Yeah, and getting money. You know what I mean? And shit. I had a youth organization that I took down to New York City, and it was like certain areas. I I had to take. Um, I, I was I went I went with them, but in the same token, I had to be across the street while the um, other chaperones take them through the area because I didn't want nobody to step up and say oh well and then start with I got juice here now you get what I'm saying yeah. so like even even like if I they were like yo they older now hey you gonna take me down there and wanna go to the 440 club okay cool you go that way when you're going to the 440 club and I'm gonna go that way but if you see me leave do not leave with me because I don't I, I never got that problem resolved <clears throat> So I can't put other people in danger with some shit that can, you know, how they say the, um, your know, history can haunt you. You know what I mean? I don't want to get nobody else in no fucking danger like that. That's a fact. You know? That's a fact. So I, I just keep them, when I take them kids down there, I take them to certain areas and then I tell the chaperones, listen, this is what you do for this area. You go right there. I'm going to be right across the street. You know what I mean? So if the problem come, it's across the street. It's not where you at. Everybody in Marcy know me as Corey. Shout out to my, my, my bro that um, was arrested, um, um, Stan Burrell. Um, because when I went through there, Stan Burrell threatened me and told me I need to bring my ass back around there. And I said, look, Stan, you living here. I didn't get everything resolved. And he said, fuck all that. I told you, come through here, you come through here. Stan Burrell was, that's my bro, that's my other bro. But I didn't want them to have problems. You know, two of my brothers having problems over some shit that I can try to get resolved. 